Okay, so in this video we are going to be looking at set notation and Venn diagrams. So by the end of this lesson you'll be able to use Venn diagrams, set language and notations for events, recognize mutually exclusive events and use the rule P of A union B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A intersection B. So let's have a look at the first one. Using Venn diagrams, set language and notation for events. When working with probabilities, we often use set notation. A U B means A union B, and is the set of all elements in set A or B. Okay, so just remember that this is or, A or B. A intersection B is the set of all elements that are in both sets A and B. Okay, so just remember that that is and. And I like to remember this by seeing that this looks like an looks like an N. Okay, so and so and just means where they intersect, or means everything inside the circles. If we're talking about Venn diagrams, that's what it means. So here we've got a Venn diagram. A union B means A or B. That's everything inside the circles. A intersection B means A and B, and that's where they intersect, okay, where the two events intersect. So let's have a look at a couple of examples. Here I've got a Venn diagram for types of ice cream. Um, how many people like vanilla? Well, we can see here that all of these people like vanilla, which is 56. How many like chocolate? All of these people like chocolate, which is 61. How many like vanilla and chocolate? Only these people like vanilla and chocolate, so that's 21. And how many like vanilla or chocolate? That's everything inside the circles. 35 plus 21 plus 40, which is 96. Um, here, people were surveyed about what kind of books they like to read, fiction, non-fiction, both or neither. So, find the probability that someone who was surveyed likes fiction only. Fiction only is just this number, which is 12 out of 15 plus 15 is 30, and we can simplify that to 2 over 5. The probability that they like non-fiction, well, not all these people like non-fiction, that's 15 out of 30, or half of them. The probability that they don't like fiction. Now here, remember that bar means not. So not fiction. Well, these people don't like fiction, but also these people don't like fiction. So 12 out of 30 people don't like fiction, which is 2 out of 5. If someone was selected at random, what's the probability that they like fiction and non-fiction? These people like fiction and non-fiction. Okay, so just remember that that little intersection there means and. So that's 6 out of 30, or 1 fifth. Um, what's the probability that someone likes fiction or non-fiction? Or means everything inside the circles. All of these people like either fiction or non-fiction. So that's 27. 27 people out of 30, which is 9 out of 10.
And this question here says, find a probability that someone does not like fiction and non-fiction. Well, 6 out of 30 like fiction and non-fiction. So the probability that someone does not like both is 1 minus the 6 out of 30, which is 24 out of 30, or 4 fifths. Draw a Venn diagram for the integers from 1 to 10. Given a is equal to um, 1, 3, 4, 5, 8, b is equal to 3, 6, 8, 9, and 10. So I'm going to draw my rectangle to represent the sample space. I'm going to draw these. Okay, and where do they intersect? They intersect right here. What do A and B both have in common? I can see that they both have a 3, and they both have an 8. They have two numbers in common. I might just write those two numbers in here. 3 and 8. So what, el what other elements belong to A? 1, 4, and 5. So I'm going to write 1, 4, and 5 here. What other elements belong to B? 6, 9, and 10. 6, 9, and 10. And therefore, what numbers are not in set A or B? 2 and 7. So let me just count. We should have 10 numbers altogether. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, we do. So that's our answer. Okay. How would you describe the shaded regions in set notation for each of the examples below? So here we've got this bit that's shaded. That is A and B. So we say A intersection B. In the second example, we can see everything is shaded except A. So is anything but A. So we can say A bar or A dash or A C for the complement. Doesn't really matter. I like to write A bar. For the third example, we've got B, but not all of B. We don't have anything that is A. So it's technically B and not A. But usually we just write um, A first, not A and B. I just like to write it this way first because it helps me think about what I need to write and then I can just rearrange it. And for the last example, everything is shaded except the middle, the intersection. The intersection represents A and B, or A intersection B, but it's everything but that, so it's A intersection B bar. Okay, let's move on to the second part of this lesson, which is looking at mutually exclusive events. Two events, A and B, are called mutually ex exclusive if they cannot both occur. For example, if a card is drawn from a deck, the events drawing a black card and drawing a heart cannot both occur, and so are mutually exclusive. That's because if we were to take a card, it's, there's no such thing as a black heart. Okay, all hearts are red, so we cannot draw a black heart. So these two events are mutually exclusive, and therefore there will be no intersection point. What does this look like as a Venn diagram? It looks like this. 
where there's no intersection point. Or we could draw a Venn diagram where they intersect, except there'll be nothing in the middle. There'll be no number in there. All right, pause the video, have a go with writing another example for two events that are mutually exclusive and you can discuss with the rest of the class. And then you can continue playing the video. All right, let's have a look at this example. If three coins are tossed, find the probability of throwing an odd number of tails. So here is our sample space. I'm just going to draw. Actually, uh, what we'll no notice is an odd number means we can either have one tail or three tails. The thing is we can't have both, can we? That's why they don't intersect. We can't have um, one and three tails at the same time. So we could get heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, or tails, heads, heads for one tail. For three tails, we could get tails, 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 tails. That's it. But what is um, not one or three tails? We could get heads, heads, heads. Heads, tails, tails. Um, tails, tails, heads. Or tails, heads, tails. So there's zero tails or two tails. So the probability of throwing an odd number of tails is 4 out of 8. Odd number of tails is 4 out of 8, which is half. Okay, if you forget um, how many elements there are in the sample space, just remember where Tossing three coins, the, the first coin will either be heads or tails, so there's two options. The second coin will be either heads or tails, so again there's two options. And the third coin will be either heads or tails, so again there's two options. So two times two times two is eight. There will be eight um, outcomes in the sample space. And we, we can see that there are eight from what we've drawn here. All right, last thing for this lesson. Use the rule probability of A or B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. So here's an example that I've, that is completely worked out for you. The probability of A or B, or vanilla or chocolate, someone liking either one. Because we know everything inside the circles, I know we can just add them. But if we use that formula, the probability of vanilla is 56 out of 100. The probability of chocolate is 61 out of 100. And then we need to minus the probability of people liking both, which is 21 out of 100. So this makes it nice and easy because they all have the same denominator. So we can just do 56 plus 61 minus 21, which is 96 out of 100. Pause the video and see if you can use this formula to answer question B. Okay. So in a class of 27 students, 18 play basketball, 14 play cricket, 7 play both. So we can ask ourselves, what's the probability that a student chosen at random plays either basketball or cricket? Well, let's do it as basketball or cricket is the probability that they do play basketball plus the probability that they play cricket minus the probability that they play both. Well, the probability that they play basketball is 18 out of 27. That they play cricket is 14 out of 27. They play both is 7 out of 27. 
So 18 plus 14 is 32, minus 7 is 25, all over 27. And that's the probabil probability that they um, play either basketball or cricket. Which means that all three numbers that are inside the um, circles will add to 25. And two will be on the outside. So that means two students don't play basketball or cricket. Alright, that's it for this video.